Okay, in this video, we're going to look at how to do a pictorial view of an assembly. So this is quite a complicated uh, drawing, but our intention here is to join all these bits together, draw an isometric pictorial view about what it looks when they are joined together, and then we're going to finally render it as well. And this is quite a common and a typical request to be asked to do when you're doing engineering pictorial views. So, our approach to this is going to be as follows. The first thing we have to do is we have to understand how all this goes together. Okay, we've got to figure out how this goes together. There's only three parts, two brackets A and B, uh, and I think an L-shaped bracket um, C right here. So the first part is we're going to try and figure out how all those go together. The second part to all this is we're then going to try and find crates and cubes, because as we know, when we're doing isometric sketching, so long as we can draw cubes and crates in isometric 3D, then we can fit these um, curves and these cylinders into it as well. Okay, So let's go back to that first stage. We've got to figure out how this goes together. And for this, we're going to use um, some preliminary thumbnail graphics, because the truth is, when we get things like this, we don't really know how things go together. So I'm going to do my, I'm going to slide this up very slightly so you can keep sight of that. And I'm going to try and figure out how this goes together. Okay. And I think the best thing I'm going to do is I'm going to think about how it would go from the top. Because what I can see happens is these two, these two parts A and B are going to come together. And this part C is going to be sandwiched in between them. How do I know that's the case? Well, I can see that here there's been a little sort of notch and a little cut out on both sides. So I reckon when these come together, that bit's going to be thick enough take in part C like this. I think in reality you would get dimensions and measurements on these drawings so that you could indeed verify if that was the case. But right now, these two bits come together, that bit sandwiched between them so that the three holes line up. Also, let's note at the back here, I don't know how clear it is on the camera, but there's a kind of little notch cut out, which makes you suggest that these two bits mate together. And what that leaves is in the middle is a kind of circular um, hole in a circular cylinder, a cylinder um, piece there. I don't know if we're clamping around a pole or a bike frame or something like that. So that's my theory. I'm going to run with that theory and I'm going to just try and do some thumbnail graphics okay, down here to try and figure out uh, what we've got. So I reckon there's going to be a circle in there and I reckon I reckon this will be the end, this will be the, the sort of tubular end of the bracket up here. And I think there's going to be a little notch right in there. And then at this point, I think we've got two legs coming away out. So all the way down here, we've got two legs coming out. Look how rough I'm being. I don't care how neat I'm being at this stage, okay? But I'm figuring it out. And then I think that the C piece lives in there like that. Now, as I say, if you do an example like this, it may be that you're given measurements to verify that these surfaces are indeed flush. And then what I think we've got running through the middle here a set of concentric holes all together. Okay, so I think I think that's how it looked. That's my best bet. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to imagine that from the side as well. Let's draw it from the side. Where should I draw it? Should I draw it this way? No, let's draw it in um, that sort of third angle projection. So I think top surface, and then these bits go out like this. And this is the this is the this is the center of the hole going through there. And I think we've got this hole right here. So this line right here that I'm indicating is the top. Is the top. That's just that's the way I've drawn it here. And then we've got that to the inside. And I've got a little notch thing going on in there. And then I think now the way I've drawn this is a little odd, but this C piece actually is going to end up going down this way, like that. It's like an L shape again. So that foot and right there, that I've just shaded in. That's if you like that one in there. Okay. So I think that's how it's going to go together. So now, once we've figured out how it goes together, and you can do as many of these doodles and thumbnails as you like, trying to figure it out, okay? We've got to try and spot where we can draw cubes and rectangles. Now, for this, I'm going to change the colour of my pencil just so it's clearer. Okay. So, 
we're going to encapsulate that cylinder in a square, right? So we need to draw that right there, and then we've got another, we've got an inner square here, because as we know, if we can find out where squares and rectangles are, and isometric, then we know how to fit cylinders within it. We've got a bunch of squares going on in there. We'll have to have something there like that. Okay, and then we'll have a big box. There's that box there. I'm trying to figure out where all these parts are um, right now. So, I think we know how it's going to go. Right? I think that's part A, that's part B, and that's C sandwiched in between them. Once we've figured out how it's going to go together in 2D, we then move across to here and try and draw it in 3D. Now, I'm going to use isometric. The reason I'm going to use isometric is because I find it an easy um, pictorial drawing technique to use. It requires less construction, less faff than say a one or two point perspective. Also, I've been given the drawings in isometric view, so I might as well continue with that. Okay, so let's build up this from the top. Right now, I've got a big cube at the back and then a little sort of cube going forward. So let's start with a, with this back cube. Let's let's draw the surface that defines the top of that cylinder. So somewhere back here, let's just draw in, and I'm probably going to end up doing this at a slightly bigger scale than the supply drawn, but that's okay. Let's make sure that those lines go back. Make sure that's above there. So I'm going to draw the diagonals in as well, just to keep everything nice and tight. And I'll also probably go ahead, because I know I'm drawing a circle, I'm going to put these construction lines in as well. Okay. So within there we're going to find an ellipse to define the top part of this drawing right here. So we're going to find an ellipse in there. So that's that square in there. And we're also going to have, um, we've got this bit sticking out the front. Okay. And then proportionately I'm looking at my top view. And I reckon that we're going to have to draw a new cube out like here. Mm. Proportionately speaking, it's probably about as long as the cylinder, so let's let's bring that out to about there. It's about as long. And then make sure put that ahead like this. And then also my top view, I've noticed I've got this, I've got the very top surface C to put in. And I think that's gonna live in somewhere about there. Okay, so that's the top surface of the assemble assembly <coughs> put in. Let's drop down some verticals. Let's define the height of this. Now it's not that tall. It's probably about that tall there. So that line there, that length there, I'm going to copy that line all the way around. All the way around these bits here. I'm also going to go into the back. Okay. And I'm going to draw the bottom. I'm making sure that I'm parallel. My bottom edges are parallel with the top. And again, let's pretend the whole thing's see-through. Let's draw a wire mesh all the way through. Now when you're doing this, the important thing is that you've got to see a difference in line quality between your construction lines, your sketch lines, and what eventually becomes your outlines, which will become darker. Now I'm going to draw this all the way see through. Okay, things start to get a little complicated at this stage, but it's important that we draw everything sort of see through and we project lines that are on the top, we take them down the side of the shape and we make sure they're on the bottom as well. Okay, this C piece I think it's actually quite easy. I think it just kind of drops down like this to that height. And then at some point here, I don't have measurements, I'm just doing it by eye, I'm just trying to do it proportionately. At some point there is a kicker out like this goes in somewhere like that. So I'm defining the crates, the cubes into which we'll put the rest of the model. Um, and I've already started to drift away from my 30 degree lines, but not to worry. I think it'll still be good enough. So that's my construction lines and I've been using pencil, I've been using a light touch. Let's start to build the circles on the top. Okay, let's do the outside circle. So the outside circle there's our tangent points there, one, two, three, and four. So 
We need to find an ellipse on this sheet lie down here. And you will turn the paper around when you're doing this, but I'm going to make sure that I can quite easily move myself around my drawing board here. So we've got to do graceful curves that meet these tangent points. And we're not committing yet, and keep the finger nice and light with the brush. nice and light, nice beautiful curve there, and we do the same at the bottom, that's our tangent point, one, two, three, four, just want to make sure, and if everything's been projected properly, then the curve that we draw on top will be the curve that we draw on the bottom as well, that's our outside cylinder, okay, and that joins up a little wonky there, and I think that's because I've been drifting away from my 30 degree lines. Okay. So that's the outside of our circle right there. Building that in. And we've got an inner surface to find. We've got this, we've got this inner uh, this hole, if you like, through here. Now, what we can do in here is we can decide how thick the hole is put in some new tangent points and it's important that we project them down and maintain thickness on the bottom surface as well. So let's go ahead and put these in. Now notice I'm dealing only with the big shapes just now, the big forms. I'm not worrying about the little notches that have been cut. I'm not worrying about, I'm going to turn the tape here. I'm not worrying about uh, little notches that have been cut or little holes that need to go in or anything like that. I'm dealing with just the big shapes and do you know what I don't think I'm going to bother drawing that one underneath because we wouldn't we wouldn't see it okay so it's going to remain invisible to us so there's our main forms right here let's talk about this hole that's going through it okay now we need a we need a square to define that hole and from my it looks like it's halfway across the bracket and a little bit and it looks like it's equidistant so I'm going to stick let's see I'm actually going to build it from the top I think it's about there it looks about that thick so let's build it from the top always from squares okay always from squares and rectangles do our best to put in the defined square and then let's build our ellipse within it In there, there's another, there's another ellipse to be had in there, just inside. So we can see that hole, and we can also see the thickness of it. So we've got an inner ellipse to construct. Now it's getting messy in here, but nonetheless, I think I can see in there. There's a little ellipse to be built in there as well. There are other holes. There's this hole here, and there's a hole going through the C bracket, which we won't see, so we don't need to bother with them. Oh, and we've got to put our split line in, split line going right up the middle. And then we've got this little notch going on here, which is just simply a little zigzag like this, with lines coming down the inside. So that's my construction. I'm going to now change the pen, okay, and I'm going to go over this in pen because I know I'm going to be rendering it in pencil in a moment. And if I put pen down, that means if I needed to, I could rub away my construction lines. Okay, so let's go ahead. I've got a fine liner here, but equally, in fact, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to ditch the fine liner and I'm going to use a biro to do this. Okay, so I'm just going to use the corner of my page to make sure this biro actually works, which it does. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to keep, we're going to darken the lines that we want to keep in here. Okay, so I'm going to start with the edge closest to us. And we're going to go over and darken the true edges of the shape. I'm going to pick out from this um, arrangement of boxes the lines that we want to keep. We're going to darken, we're going to go 
in a darker name. Hang on a second, I've just had a battery warning has come up. Hang on. does is this gives more dominance, gives more focus to the lines that we want to keep and it demotes it reduces its importance to the lines that we can visually discard anyway. So let's put in these dark lines. Like I said if you're able it's sometimes a good idea to actually go ahead and just erase, just rub out the pencil lines. So the curves are the trickiest thing, as always, so let's leave them to last. And I'm going to actually turn the page quite a lot here, so let's bring these in. Like that. And down from here, I have just a beautiful, neat curve like this. To that point. This line here wouldn't be darkened because it's a continuous surface there's nothing on there's nothing on that line so I'm going to be careful I'm not going to go ahead and do that but I'm going to do the split line the line between the two parts go ahead and do that darken that and let's continue these curves all the way around turning the page to find that, that drawn angle that I'm most happy with Aligned at this angle, and it should be the inner, the inner one as well. And let's just do a little notch like we zigzag here, two lines going that way, and one line going that way. Let's have a line going up and down. Here's the outer hole, and there's the inner hole just. I did all that construction just to get a little peek of the hole through there. And nothing else on the inside we can see. Okay, now, to improve the aesthetics of this ever so slightly, I'm going to take a marker and I'm going to do the outline. Okay, so now we're straying, we're straying from the area of technical accuracy into the aesthetics right now. So I have decided that this would be nicer looking if I go around the hole the outside with a black marker and I'm also applying a style of sort of crossover and a silhouette so I'm just going around if you like the silhouette and where two sharp edges meet I'm just letting the marker do a little kind of crisscross pattern let me turn this round so you can see what I'm doing That's the silhouette I need right there. Okay, what I'm going to go ahead now and do is I'm going to pause the video and erase and rub out the pencil lines so that we can then go ahead and uh, render in pencil. Okay, I'm back and I've uh, rubbed out the pencil lines that I'd used to construct this. Uh, get rid of all the shavings, made sure there's nothing underneath the page that would attach a pencil rendering and leave a little dark point so I'm just make sure that's all cleaned away which I think it is, feels like it is and we're going to render this but before we do that I'm going to make a couple of aesthetic changes to it this overhang right here I think should be darker okay so I'm going to go in and I'm going to just darken that up a little bit just because it's an overhang and the same on the other side I'm going to hang that overhang that just get up a little bit more crispness. I'm also going to make more of a deal with the join line. I'm going to darken that, thicken it, okay, that outline, just because I wanted to see a difference between the three parts. So that's just an aesthetic decision. This is where pictorial uh, 
decisions come in. Okay. So I'm going to make those little changes to it. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to make the uh, two brackets red and the uh, C bracket um, will go for kind of green colour. Now, we're using a tonal scale from previous videos and also I'm using the techniques on the rendering materials video because you wouldn't, you wouldn't imagine that these are made out of uh, plastic. So that means for the red, I've got a light tone and a mid tone. And for the green, I've got a light tone and a mid tone. And I'm going to get darkness, I'm going to get my, my darker tone by adding, of course, blue to it. We don't use black, we're going to use dark blue or sometimes purple. And it gives a nice result. Okay, so I'm going to imagine that the light is coming from this direction. Right, if you were doing this, you wouldn't draw this little assembly on, or if you were, you'd put it in pencil so you can rub it out. It's going to mean that the top face of this assembly is going to be the lightest. Um, these ones pointing this way are going to be uh, medium, and then everything pointing this way is going to be the darkest. So let's start with my lightest red tone. And I'm going to render the entire brackets A and B. I'm going to get just a consistent shade it. I need to be careful I'm almost almost straight into C and then I need to be careful inside that little hole as well because inside that little hole is a little bit of green it's going to be shown okay, so this is all kind of red really really quite light at this stage okay this is the lightest tone we're putting on first I want to get more control, so I've held my pencil near the tip of it, and I'm now going ahead and putting. So I'm quite happy with that. That's a kind of light red tone all across it. I'm going to move ahead and get my lightest green tone. I'm going to do the same. Make my life easy. I'm going to just change the angle that I'm rendering at right here. spot of green as well. So let's go for our medium tone. Let's get my medium red. Uh, I'll turn the page slightly at this point. And I'm going to draw all the sides. All these sides that are pointing sideways. to it. My goal here is to make the part look as though it's 3D, so I'm trying to do this to shade it to a bit of form uh, so that we give the uh, we give it form. My side there as well, I'm going to draw a little bit darker. Now I may choose actually do a little bit of cross hatching here to go across in the other direction just to darken this, darken it even further. I want, I want them nice and long. So basically I'm going over this mid tone of red twice. Kind of hard to see the difference, but if we stop and take a look back, we're now getting a nice change between the light and the sides. And we have to remember to go over these sides with the dark bit as well, even though they're going to end up a lot darker. So what happens inside this little bit here, well, this part of the curve which is pointing upwards is going to stay light, and this part of the curve which is pointing this way is going to become darker. So we need a, we need a gradation in from light, pushing harder, pushing harder up to dark in here. That bit there is pointing upwards, so it gets the same tone as the upward facing part here. This part here is pointing this way, so it gets the same tone as these faces that are pointing this way. Okay, so that's medium red. Let's pick up medium green. Again, we have to go down here. That all gets medium. And 
here. This face here is pointing upwards, so it's going to stay bright. Same as that. This one here is pointing to the left, so it's going to get medium tone as well. Just like this. And then finally we need to do our dark stuff. Okay, and we've got a dark blue right here. So anything that's pointing this way, sort of to the right and down, is going to get the darkest of all. And we're going to start off and we can run this blue right over both of these colours now. We can run that blue right over there, just like that. And we can continue it down. And make this whole bit darker in here. This really makes it pop, really gives it a lot of contrast. Okay. And also, there's a little bit of that inside surface is pointing this way too. So you need to make sure that you put a little bit of blue and blend it in because it's a cylinder. In there, like so. Now, we've got this, let's talk about this cylinder right here. This is a wrap around, okay? So this area right here is pointing this way, so it gets the same tone as this face. But as we come around here, we're getting to this area of the face right here, which is beginning to point off in this direction. So this should be getting close to this dark blue here as well, but not all the way around. So let's put in just a little bit of darkness in there. Make sure, because it's a cylinder, we need to lighten up, we need to blend it round. Just darken that slightly. Same goes in here, the inside surface back here is pointing down in this direction, so it should really get quite a dark. It should be dark round here, probably about there. And then we need to blend it, we need to blend it into that medium tone. Okay? So soften up the pencil strokes. And that I would say is a pretty good rendering of this shape. We could go ahead and we could do some more advanced stuff. So we could actually, we could, if we wanted to, we could figure out where shadowing would be, etc. This this face right here probably wouldn't be that bright. It would probably be catching shadows from the red bit above it. But for now, that's pretty good. Let's just darken some of this stuff up. And that gives you, that's the process for doing a rendered pictorial assembly. We studied the parts that we were given, we then figured out with thumbnails and with orthographic drawings how those parts went together and we looked at these drawings to find the squares and the rectangles that we could draw as cubes and boxes and crates in isometric. And once we constructed the crates and the boxes and we got our proportions right then we could go in and we could find the curves and the thicknesses and the depths of them. Finally, uh, we went around it with pen. We picked out the lines that were most important to us. We rubbed out the construction and we darkened off the silhouette. This is just an aesthetic technique. And then we went ahead and shaded it. We decided what was light, medium and dark and we applied tones consistently so that everything facing upwards was light. Everything facing off this way was medium and everything facing off change hands this way was dark